One of my goals with this channel is to have such an elaborate library of commentaries that instead of having to reply to every uh, counter argument in my inbox or in the comment threads, I can just point them to a video in which I've already replied to their argument. This is gonna be one of those kinds of videos because whenever I publish something that is critical of attempts to force compatibilities between contemporary pop culture and Christian worship, I'm usually met with the same litany of arguments. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to reply to it in a video so that future replies to those comments and those counter arguments will be a link rather than me trying to type up an essay. Whenever someone makes the case for the restoration of elements of Catholic culture which had become scarce in the 20th and 21st century, like Gothic architecture, Latin, or Gregorian chant, you will often hear a couple things said in reply to that. One of the first go-to arguments that people will make is that Jesus and the disciples in the Last Supper, they didn't celebrate in Latin. They probably spoke Greek or Hebrew or Aramaic. They didn't have thuribles swinging around, they didn't have fancy vestments, and they didn't sing Gregorian chant. Therefore, I guess we should embrace pop folk fusion hymns, liturgical dance, and a sexual ethic that was developed in the 1960s that has been empirically disastrous for society. They will go on to develop that argument by saying that Gothic architecture and Gregorian chant, these things were new and innovative and progressive in their day as well. And the church embraced them. So therefore, we should be just as willing today to embrace cultural expressions that are new and innovative in the name of progress. The first thing that stands out to me about this sequence of argumentation is how it refutes itself. Like, did you notice this? Like, which is it? Are we to look back to Jesus and the disciples and refuse to add anything to that cultural expression out of some sort of sense of extreme primitivism? Or should we embrace progressivism and look to every new and novel idea to enhance our worship and our theology? Because it can't be both. Those two proposals are as diametrically opposed as it gets. But setting that that glaring contradiction aside for a second, accusing Orthodox or even traditional Catholics as being opposed to everything new simply because it's new and that this is why we recoil from modern and modernism uh, is a gross straw man accusation. Tradition is about preserving culture and doctrines which have been shown to be good and are therefore worthy of conservation. Contemporary cultural or theological elements which have found their way into the church today aren't opposed by traditional Catholics because they're new, it's because they contradict the faith. In order to elaborate on that, I'm going to repeat some things that I've said a lot in the past, but instead of just beating a dead horse, hopefully I can elaborate a little bit on it. Christopher Dawson, who is a writer of just extraordinary depth, but for some reason is not well known among Catholics today, he argued that culture is embodied religion. The way I've tried to frame it uh, in some of my past videos is by saying that culture is the incarnation of beliefs. Since every historical culture found its embodiment in religion, that means that we can't disregard the religious component of this question. What this means is that every culture will bloom outwards from a religious creed or a lack of one for that matter. Uh, the analogy that I've liked to use in the past is that words are the embodiment of our thoughts, which means that our thoughts precede that materialization. Culture is a way of life and all the expressions of that way of life of a people. And you cannot sustain a creed like a religion without a culture which strengthens it. Okay, so with that context in mind, let's let's revisit some of these cultural persuasions which feature in the contemporary liturgical wars of contemporary Catholicism. And I hope by now, if you've listened to me rant about this stuff for long enough, you know that this isn't merely about liturgy in my mind. This is about culture. It's much broader, even though liturgy is a very important part of Catholic culture. The elements that traditional Catholics are so attached to are such because they blossomed out of a uniquely Catholic culture. This was a culture that was inspired by the doctrines of Christianity and then organized itself around them. Cultural elements like Gregorian chant and Gothic architecture were naturally and organically drawn from the bosom of the faith. The contemporary and pop cultural accessories that we try to shoehorn into modern contemporary worship in the church today come from the bosom of somewhere else. But if we're going to use body parts for this analogy, I would rather swap bosom out for a different body part to describe 
their origin. Pop culture, modern music, modern architecture, these are the embodiment of the modern religion, or rather the lack of true religion in the modern world. They find their origin in a range of philosophies that aren't just incompatible with Catholic Christianity, they are violently opposed to it. Philosophies like secularism, positivism, nihilism, communism, and modern modernism are fundamentally opposed to the church, and it is they that inspire the degrading fashions of today. Archbishop Fulton Sheen once said in a quote that I can't now find, unfortunately, something to the effect of, you can't separate an art or cultural movement from its philosophy of origin. They are intrinsic to each other. The opposition to Catholic Christianity in these philosophies is explicit and unambiguous the moment you start reading it. So traditional Catholics aren't opposed to everything contemporary, just that particular kind of contemporary that flourishes in a soup of philosophies that are contemptuous of Catholicism. I've said in the past that trying to adopt someone else's culture while trying to retain your own creed is like trying to express your thoughts with someone else's words. And I want to backtrack from that a little bit because that isn't strong enough. It's more like trying to express your thoughts with the words of someone who earnestly hates you. Just like you can't separate an organ from one body and then transplant it into an incompatible body and expect it to thrive, not only will it not thrive, it will die. And anyone with an honest appreciation for what's been going on with Catholicism or even Christianity in Western culture in general knows that that's what's happening. We cannot discard our culture and the things that were uniquely produced in an era when the faith was wholly embraced by a people and expect to survive. This is not only true for the church in general, but it's also true for us as individual Catholics. You cannot embrace a culture that is hostile towards the moral and religious beliefs of the church in order to fit in with contemporary culture while still trying to live according to the teachings of the church. In the words of our Lord, a house divided cannot stand. Hey, thanks for watching that. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to like and subscribe for more. And if you want to support the making of content like this, then please consider joining my online community, The Reinforcements. It's, it's kind of like Patreon, but instead of being beholden to a big tech company, it's a website I built entirely myself. So there's no risk of us being censored or shut down or anything like that. There are hundreds of people who have already signed up and our mission is to renew and reinforce the church. So if that's you, then, then come check it out. As an added bonus for certain tiers, I will also send you a gift box from Glory and Shine, which is a Catholic family owned and operated company. Um, they make bath and body products. They're actually their beard balm. I'm, I'm supporting or I'm, I'm sporting right now. I'm not just a spokesperson, I'm actually a customer. So even if you don't join the reinforcements, maybe check them out anyways. Glory and Shine, they're, they're an amazing company.